Hey there, today we'll be talking about fake skyboxes. So, let's get right into it. First things first, why? And the answer is global illumination. Now, if you don't know anything about global illumination, that won't tell you anything, so I'll just show you. If we go over here, we'll have this sphere. And you might notice that the bottom of the sphere looks kind of brown, while the top of it is blue. Now, if we look up, we'll see that the sky is pretty bluish. And if we look down and actually also go into no clip and go through the floor, we'll see that the ground all around us is brown. Now, due to this, this sphere is also blue and brown. Now, in some cases, you may not want your global illumination, which is what this here is, to be exactly the same as your skyboxes top and bottom colors. So in those cases, you can in fact then go and use a procedural skybox material instead. And now, as you can see, we have a much more normal white color, but the skybox is gone. Now we don't have to settle for this blank, kind of bland environment just because we don't want to have a skybox. What we do, is we just go to our dev tool and create new 3D model sphere, select the sphere and open it up in the inspector, reset its position and rotation to zero, 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 then change its rotation to by 180 degrees on the X axis. So it's upside down, essentially. Next, we'll simply go and remove the grabbable as well as the sphere collider. And finally, on the radius, we'll set this to negative 500. Now, once we've done this, we'll have this pretty much white dome around us. So what we can now do is we can simply parent this into the skybox slot. And let's just call this Actually, no, let's keep, let's keep it called Sphere. That makes perfect sense. Skybox, Sphere. And then on the fake slot that I've already made, we'll simply go to Assets, Materials, and we'll make a Unlit, Unlit. Now, over here, we have the image that was on our original Skybox. So we'll just grab this and put it as the texture. Grab the material, go to Sphere, and simply put that onto the mesh renderer. And now, as you can see, our skybox is back. And if we once more clip through the ground, the, the ground is brown again. So this way, we effectively have a completely fake skybox now. Now, depending on your world, you may want to add a little bit more to this than just this very basic setup, because currently what the issue is that if we actually go all the way over this direction, you'll see that the skybox is actually coming closer and closer until eventually we're at the end looking in. Now, if your world isn't that big, such as this one here, that does not really come up that much. And if it's even smaller, it'll come up even less. However, if your world is relatively big, what you can do to fix this issue of the skybox eventually becoming visible is you simply add a parent slot onto the sphere here. And then on this parent slot, we'll get an attached component, transform drivers, position at user. And we'll want to undrive the rotation here. And then simply make this position source here based off of the head. Although anything here would really work. We could even do view. But we'll do head just because it's the simplest one that we can do right now. So then we simply enable position at local user. And now as we're moving around, just like with a normal skybox, this skybox will actually be offsetting based off of me moving. So if I go towards the edge of the world again, 
this time I can see the outside and I'm none the wiser that this is actually a fake skybox. Now, personally, in most cases when I'm working in the world, they're not big enough to really warrant this. So I'd say, since it does take some a little bit of extra processing, only use it if you really have to, because th there's nothing really gained if your world isn't big enough to where it actually comes up. Now, another thing is that with a fake skybox that uses an OLED material, there is the potential that it might be over-rendering something. However, what you can simply do is you can adjust its render queue. So for example, we could go down to 2500 if it's over-rendering transparent materials and that the render queue 2500, it should now no longer over-render transparent materials if that does come up. But yeah, this is pretty much it. We now have a fake skybox. It moves with us. And the only last thing I'll show is just quickly going back into Skybox and with the procedural scan material, which by the way, you can find in Assets, Materials, Skybox, Procedural Sky Material. We'll just quickly adjust our lighting, specifically our global illumination to be a bit more custom than it was. That a bit darker. And there we go. Now we have a kind of orange to green gradient as our as our global illumination. And you'll also see this on the actual tool here, for example. Which brings us to the last thing I'll mention is that if you do use a fake skybox, this will also mean that your skybox won't show up in reflections which means if you're making use of a fake skybox, ideally you should also add some reflection probes because otherwise it might look not as good as when you're using a regular skybox, even though you have now more control over the lighting. And if you want to completely get rid of the global illumination, you can simply set exposure to zero and atmospheric thickness to zero. And now we no longer have global illumination. We just have regular light now, which is why when I rotate like this, you can see my hand go from pure black to being actually lit because there's a singular direction of light in this world. But yeah, I, I hope this helps you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.